And turning now to the major decision by the Trump administration banning the popular social media apps TikTok and WeChat from U.S. app stores effective this Sunday. So what does that mean for you exactly? Our business correspondent Deirdre Bolton is here now to break it all down. So Deirdre, if you have TikTok on your phone already, are you impacted? And what does this mean for its roughly 100 million users here in the U.S.? Yeah, 100 million users. We cannot ignore that number. Part of the reason why the Trump administration is not ignoring it, of course, Lindsay. So right now, if you already have the app, honestly, nothing happens to you until November 12th. So you can still post all the short videos or view the short videos that make you laugh, whether it's pets or recipes or comedy acts. So none of that changes until November 12th. One caveat, though, to that is that if there is is an update or somehow you receive just a prompt from the app to change something, you will not be able to make any changes, mostly updates, as of Sunday. Now, if you don't already have the app, the Commerce Department said if you don't have it by midnight on Sunday, you will not be able to download it if you are living in the U.S., Lindsay. All right. And why did the Trump administration make this move? And what is TikTok saying about all this? So the Trump administration made this move because if we can remember, go back in time, pre-pandemic, one of the bigger focal points of the Trump administration was U.S. and China and addressing what the Trump administration considered truly an imbalance between the world's two largest economies. The Trump administration felt that the U.S. was never treated fairly, if you like, always felt that China got the upper hand. You recall in 2018, the U.S. essentially kicked off a trade war, started started imposing tariffs, China retaliated. So there's just been growing tension between the two largest economies in the world since at least 2018. Questions of intellectual property, accusations that China steals a lot from U.S. companies. So this has really been a big theme, which post-pandemic, in some respects, we've sort of lost sight of, if you like. But the main charge here from the Commerce Department against TikTok is that the owner, ByteDance, is Chinese. And the Commerce Department said, Says, that's a security threat. In other words, maybe we all think it's silly because these short videos are fun and they're lively and they're very much part of our social media scene. But for example, I spoke with one expert, uh, Mark Douglas, and he's the CEO of Steelhouse. He, it's a tech and media firm. And he said, yeah, maybe it seems silly, but maybe a senator's niece or nephew posts TikTok. And if that information, if that data lives somewhere else, in foreign servers, perhaps that does represent a serious security risk. As for TikTok's comment, Lindsay, I'm just going to read you uh, right from their point here, essentially saying that they are disappointed and they say that they have really been cooperating with the Commerce Department. However, they are diplomatic in saying they hope a situation or rather a solution can be reached. It says, uh, disappointed with the Commerce Department's decision, saying it already had committed to unprecedented levels of additional transparency, Lindsay. And of course, it's not just TikTok. WeChat will effectively be banned from the U.S. on Sunday, and not just new downloads of the app. Why is WeChat being banned as well? And what impact might that have on its users here in the U.S. and in China? WeChat, to a certain extent, had a target on its back. It is owned by Tencent, which is a huge Chinese conglomerate. Some people here think of it sometimes like Amazon. It's $650 billion market cap. If you look at the Hong Kong market, it has everything. It has cloud computing. It has gaming. It has entertainment. And it has this messaging service, WeChat. And really, people can do tons of things with it. They can send money. They can order food. They can chit-chat with friends. So for a lot of people uh, who are living in the U.S. with families in Asia, this has been a lifeline. And as of Sunday midnight, Lindsay, they will not be able to send money to their families or receive money from their families in China. Lindsay. Wow. OK, Deirdre Bolton, thanks so much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.